My name is Corey Hart. I'm an education specialist for Vermont Fish and Wildlife, and I'm here with season three of our SCAD and Track program. Uh, this year, we're going to be covering four different species. Uh, we're going to be focusing on the white-footed mouse, mink, ruffed grouse, and striped skunk. If you would like to focus on last year's species and the year before that, you can find all of that on our website at vtfishandwildlife.com. The way the Scat and Track program is going to run is you have two options to participate. You can either participate weekly during the months of January and February through a Zoom session uh, with your teacher, or you can then watch a pre-recorded video once a week at your convenience, and then go outside and look for signs of the critter that we discussed. Uh, before we go into our first critter, uh, which is gonna be the white-footed mouse, we are gonna talk a little bit about the mission of Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department, and a little about, ha about habitat and the things animals need to survive. So getting right into it, uh, the mission of the Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department is the conservation of all species of fish, plants, and wildlife and their habitats for the people of Vermont. And what does that mean? Well, that means we're responsible for all the critters that are in Vermont. We're not responsible for just our game species that we often think about, such as deer and bear, but we're also responsible for all of the plants and our lesser known species, such as mice, which is what we're gonna be focusing on today. In Vermont, we have four species of mice, and all of them are considered common and can be found throughout the state. We have the woodland jumping mouse, the deer mouse, the meadow jumping mouse, and of course, the white-footed mouse, which is what we're gonna be focusing on today. At the end of the video, we're gonna be focusing on how to look for signs of these critters. And what makes it a little challenging is when we're looking for tracks, the tracks in all four of these mice, mice species look really similar. So it can be hard to differentiate between the, the four species that we have. Uh, but that's why focusing on areas like habitat can really help us in narrowing it down and focusing on the right location. Uh, to identify the white-footed mouse, you'll see a photo of it on your screen that you can compare to as I'm talking. Uh, and they have a white underbody with uh, white feet, as well as a tail that's about half the length of the mouse. Uh, their main coloration is typically a brownish uh, to reddish brown color. So now we're going to talk a little bit about habitat. So all animals need the same basic things to survive. And that seems a little crazy if you think about it, but we need the same things that mice could need to survive as humans. And when it comes down to the bare bones basics, we really do. So we all need four basic things. We all need food. We don't eat the exact same things that, that mice do. Uh, whereas this morning I got up and I had cereal for breakfast. Uh, but a mouse is going to go out and might have seeds, berries, th those type of things. Uh, we also all need some sort of water source. Uh, whereas I use uh, my sink this morning to, to fill up my water bottle before work. Uh, the mice are going to find uh, any sort of water source that they can find out in the forest. And that goes for any critter. Uh, so we have food, water, and we also need some sort of shelter. So for us, our shelter is our home uh, that we live in. Our, our mice also have some sort of home. Uh, so it could be uh, underneath a, a small brush pile, in the, or it could even be in our houses. So you might have mice problems at your home. It's very common to find uh, uh, white-footed mice in abandoned buildings and places like that, as there's, especially as the, the days get a little colder. Uh, but there'll also be underneath uh, small little sections in, in the undergrowth and areas like that where they'll make their nests. And we'll talk about that in a little bit more. The last thing that all of our species need to survive is space or arrangement. It is how close all of that is to get together. Uh, so how close is that? Food, water, and shelter. And for our white-footed mice, they need those fairly close together. For a species like a bobcat, they can have their food, water, and shelter spread out over a really long area because uh, they, they're territorial and tend to roam. Whereas the white-footed mouse, it's a lot closer to get. All right, so what type of habitats do the white-footed mouse live in? Well, when we're looking for, for signs of the white-footed mice, we always want to start in their appropriate habitat. And we're going to find them in low to mid-elevation settings, uh, typically around areas uh, where dry forests and mixed uh, mixed forests as well. So in a, a mix of uh, coniferous and deciduous forests, uh, meaning uh, in areas where we might have pine trees as well as mixed in with some oaks and maples. Anywhere where you have uh, brush like I have behind me, as well as an agricultural setting is where white-footed mice thrive. So think of areas along the edges of field edges. So if I have a cornfield, 
uh, right on that edge would be a spot where I would definitely find signs of, of these mice. Uh, but we also find them quite frequently in suburban settings as well. So as I mentioned earlier in the video, it's not uncommon to find them uh, around people's homes and areas like that where they can easily seek out food sources as well as uh, places to make their nests. So while we do find them out uh, in the forest, uh, they are very common in suburban areas. The average lifespan of the white-footed mouse is only about one year. That said, at about two months of age, female uh, white-footed mice can actually start reproducing and their breeding season takes place from spring to the fall. So during that nine month period, it only takes them about 23 days or so to produce a litter. So they can produce several litters during that period. Each litter they produce is gonna be about four to five young. And it's really common for a female white-footed mouse during that time period to create well over uh, four or five litters during that period, over that nine month uh, span. So we mentioned that the white-footed mouse only has about one year or so of, of a lifespan. And that's because they're at the bottom of the food chain. There are a lot of other critters that actually eat them as part of their, their food source. And those critters are everything from weasels, uh, foxes, falcons, coyotes, owls. All of those critters rely on the white-footed mouse. So one of the things that actually helps increase the survival of the white-footed mouse, and a fact that a lot of people don't know, is they are excellent climbers. So we don't just find them on the ground, but they're really excellent climbers at climbing trees, uh, which help them to ex both escape predator as well as get their food source. So they are actually omnivores, which is another interesting fact that not everybody realizes. So they will eat things like insects, uh, seeds, uh, fungus, leaves. So white-footed mice are really well known uh, for creating food caches. Similar to the one you see in front of us right here, which is made up uh, of acorns and looks like maybe some seeds and things like that. So what they actually do is they go out and they gather up their food source, whether it be acorns, seed, uh, leaves, uh, whatever it may be. And they'll stash it in areas so that they can come back to it and have that ample supply of food available to them. Uh, sometimes it'll be in spots just like this that might even just be on the ground. Other times it'll be stashed in uh, brush piles or in uh, abandoned buildings or structure and places like that, oftentimes located near their nests. So we are almost to the point in the program where you're gonna go outside with your teacher and look for signs of the white-footed mouse. And that's the one thing that we haven't covered yet are the sign of the mice that we're gonna actually be looking for when we go out. So as you might remember from the beginning, white-footed mice are very, very small. So they don't leave behind much sign. Uh, the main thing we're gonna be looking for is going to be their tracks, as well as you might get lucky and find their droppings or their scat, uh, which are a lot easier to find on snow. So when we're looking for any sort of uh, tracks, we split up animals into different categories, and it makes it a lot easier for us uh, to figure out what the species is. We classify white-footed mice as hoppers, uh, which helps us to eliminate a lot of other tracks that are out there. And what does that mean when I say they're a hopper? Well, what that means is they're quite literally hopping. So their two paws, so the front ones are gonna be aligned together and their rear ones are also gonna be aligned. They're gonna hop kind of over their feet. One of the other things I'm looking at when I'm looking at tracks as well is something called the straddle. And the straddle is the difference between the two feet or the paws. So from the one on the left to the one on the right. And, and our mice, that's only about four to five centimeters. So if I'm imitating that for you right now, my straddle would be way too large. But what I can do is give you kind of a, an idea of how they're actually hopping. So I have my rear feet here, my front one's here, and I'm gonna go forward and something like that. And you'll see a much better image on our screen of a mouse actually hopping, as well as the tracks right there. They give you kind of a better mental image of what we're looking for when we go out and start looking for signs of the white-footed mouse. Another thing that makes it very difficult uh, when we're tracking uh, white-footed mice in particular, is that we can't differentiate between the other mouse species that are out there uh, when just looking at their tracks. Because their tracks look the same, whether I'm looking at a white-footed mouse or I'm looking at a deer mouse. So one of the ways that I can help to differentiate that a little bit is it's not perfect, but if I focus on the habitat, so in the correct areas. So remember, with our white-footed mouse, we're looking for areas that are mixed forests typically low elevation, 
and often around suburban or agricultural settings. And we do have some overlap with some of our, our mouse species. Remember, we have four mouse species in Vermont. Uh, but our biggest thing for us when we get out with our teachers and we go out looking is we just want to focus on finding the signs of those mouse tracks. So look in areas where you have brush, field edges, even a spot kind of where I am right now, right on the edge of this little grassy field where I'm standing and I have brush right here, that will be an excellent spot. And if you can get out when you have a little bit of snow on the ground, it makes it that much easier 